Jeff Buckworthy. Commonwealth, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Blue Collar TV. And let me tell you right up front, we are not here to change the world. We are here to make it a little more bearable, okay? Yeah. Now, this is our very first show, and we decided each week we would have a theme, you know, kind of a thread through the show. And this week, our topic is family. All right, how many people here tonight have a family? All right, now, how many people think their family is crazy? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. You know, growing up, I worried about being adopted and, and not hoping that I wasn't, praying that I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my family is nuts. My cousin traced our family tree and found out that our ancestors came to Georgia in 1721. They never left, and they never bought any property. <laughs> 300 years in the USA, the land of plenty, the greatest economic opportunity in the history of mankind, and we never accomplished anything. <laughs> we can't even cut the grass. And I knew the handwriting was on the wall. Our family coat of arms includes a hammock and a can of beer. <laughs> See, that's why I don't believe in evolution, because if my family had started out as monkeys, they would still be monkeys! <laughs> with really high grass! But look on the bright side. When you live in a nut house, there's always plenty to talk about, and we got plenty to talk about tonight. Stick around. It's Blue Collar TV, y'all. Go, man. Excuse me. Excuse me, waiter. What is this on my turkey? Oh, that's a cranberry basil sauce with just a hint of sherry. You mean the turkey don't come with gravy? Daddy, there's no gravy on my fries. Calm down, honey. Your daddy's getting into it. Daddy, my mash ain't got no gravy on it. I'm scared. I know, son, I know. Listen, we need to get some gravy on these meals. I'm sorry, but we don't have any gravy. No gravy? Why would you do that? Don't let this happen to you. Hi, I'm Dan Grogan, and I want you to come on down to Dan Grogan's House of Gravy. Remember, we have ample bus parking. Hey, how are you folks enjoying your meal? Good gravy! This is great gravy. It sure is. You know, our gravy's been called the champagne of gravies, and it's the Dan Grogan's House of Gravy guarantee that we will smother, cover, choke, drown, or just plain murder whatever food you want in our succulent brown sauce. You want a steak? How about some gravy with that? You want pasta? Let's gravy that up. Are you watching your weight? Try our steamed veggie plate gravy style. We got sushi. We got your text mix. If you got a sweet tooth, try one of our award-winning desserts like our chocolate brown egg gravy sundae. Or old DG's favorite, gravy pie. And that ain't all. Hey, how about washing it all down with a picture of our world-famous ice gravy? It's a meal in itself. And for the kids, what could be more fun than gravy bombs? Cool! Awesome! Bomb it away, kids! Hey, hit that old lady!
So come on down to Dan Grogan's House of Gravy, where it's all gravy all the time. Coming up, it's a blue-collar road trip. Julie, spit out that cookie. Why is it they always put stuff in dead people's caskets? I know. It's not like the dead guy's going to enjoy them. Wait till we get to Grandma's. Then how come Dooley's got a cookie? Where'd he get a cookie from? I gave it to him. Where'd you get a cookie, Ronnie? Blake gave it to me. Blake, where'd you get the cookie? I don't have a cookie. I know, honey, but Ronnie says you gave him a cookie. Dooley's got the cookie. I know, and I'm trying to find out where Dooley got the cookie from. From me, Mom. I gave it to him. <laughs> I know that, Ronnie, but I need to know where the cookie came from. From Blake. Blake, where did you find the cookie? I found it in the bathroom at the gas station. <laughs> Dooley, Dooley, spit out that cookie. someone laughs at you, what do you do? Hit him? <laughs> no, use your words, remember? I'm going to hit you really hard. <laughs> Can I hit him in the face with the back? Ah, no. Stop, Blake! Stop! Stop, Blake! <laughs> I made bread! <laughs> Mom! Mom! I can see Dooley's wiener! You shouldn't be able to see his wiener. I'm looking right! Mom? <laughs> Blake! Blake, do Mommy a favor and put Dooley's wiener back in his diaper. <laughs> 
She's kidding, right? <laughs> no, you heard her, Blake. Put Dooley's weenie back in his pack. <laughs> no. Mom, Blake's not listening to you. Shut up. You shut you up. Shut up. <laughs> Dan, let's just get the boys some ice cream and everyone will calm down. All right, all right, fine. We will get the ice cream. Yay! Yay! Works every time, man. <laughs> How much do you weigh right now? 264. She has not weighed 264 since she was 10. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Hey, guys. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing home? Cleo, the reason I'm home is that your mother called me. <laughs> we need to talk. Have a seat, honey. <laughs> Cleo, your mother found this stuck in the back of your closet. It's a Diet shake. <laughs> it's not mine. It's that Janie Kellerman. She's a bad influence, I told you. Is that it? Are you holding for Janie? <laughs> I don't know how that got in my closet. And how do you explain these sneakers <laughs> and this sports bra? <laughs> Are you exercising? <laughs> All right. Oh, oh my God! My God. Oh, my God. oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! What is that? Oh my God! What is that? Come here! In the name of a bacon and cheeseburger, was that? She is wasting away! I am not wasting away. I just lost a little weight. All the kids are doing it. If all the kids jazzercised off the bridge, would that make it okay? How much do you weigh right now? 264. Oh. She has not weighed 264 since she was 10. There is nothing wrong with me. Oh, that's just the jogging talking. You have a diet problem, now say it. I don't, Mama, say I it. don't have a new no, Say I don't it, have there's it. all the shakes in the closet. Right, 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 I have no shut idea up, what's going shut on. Shut up, shut up. Sweetie, when your mother and I were, were much younger, well, we dabbled in dieting. We were out of control. I mean, it got so bad with me that I was stealing money out of my daddy's wallet just to pay for my Jenny Craig program. What happened? Well, we hit rock bottom. 
when your mother and I went to a Richard Simmons weekend retreat. <laughs> I looked at your mother. She looked at me, and then we both looked at Richard Simmons. We went cold turkey. I went hot turkey with gravy and mashed potatoes. <laughs> I went with the burritos and the enchiladas, and then we had yes, the chalupas, and then we put the whipped cream in the chocolate. Okay, I get it. I just wanted to be like everybody else. Honey, no diet gives you the same rush as that first bite of a fudge sickle. <laughs> Oh, there, there. It's okay. Oh, it's gonna be It'll okay. Be okay. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Why don't we check O'Cleo into a weekend Vegas buffet? What do you think about that? Hey, let's have a super size weekend. All right, what Yay! are we waiting for? Handsome. Hey, when you get done with that sunblock, you think you get handsome over here? <laughs> Thank you. You don't want to get too burnt out here. Got that right, partner. Handsome. Coming up next. I believe Angelina Jolie thinks about me as much as I do about her. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We decided tonight that we, uh, that we wanted to leave you with something a, a little bit more inspirational and I think we'd like to do tribute to that right now. I believe people that have been married for a long time never ask each other, what are you thinking about? Because they're too scared the other one's gonna say, how I could kill you and not go to jail. I believe the color of the state flag of Alabama should be primer. I believe there should be an application process for anyone who wants to wear a thong. I believe you show me a three-year-old running around a flea market in his underpants drinking Coca-Cola out of a baby bottle, and I'll show you a future NASCAR fan. <laughs> I believe guns don't kill people. Husbands that come home early do. <laughs> I believe Angelina Jolie thinks about me as much as I do about her. But I believe she doesn't do it on a hotel bed with a towel and a bottle of lotion. <laughs> well, I believe I'm not telling you any more secrets. <laughs> I believe that's all the time we got. Good night, y'all. Next week on Blue Collar TV, <gasps> it's Rescue 911, Friendly Neighbors, and a surprise visit from Ron White.
Jeff Buckley. Well, welcome to Blue Collar TV, and tonight's theme is naked. Yeah. 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 Now, the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, I believe when it comes to naked, there are a lot more of us on the fearfully side of this group <laughs> than the wonderfully, all right? Not long ago, I sat in a steam room at the gym, and let me just tell you, the laws against nudity are not to stop people from having sex. They are to stop people from being nauseated, okay? <laughs> well, and the truth is, men's bodies, for the most part, are not made to be enticing. See, men's bodies were made to be able to catch and kill stuff and to be able to pee while being chased by a large animal. That's the truth. And there seems to be only two times when we will accept people being naked. That's when they're little kids running around the yard and when they're big girls dancing around a pole. Uh, And the amazing thing is, people at nudist camps actually think you can live your whole life naked. <laughs> See, I don't believe that's true, because there's lots of stuff you really don't want to do naked. <laughs> Frying bacon. <laughs> Beekeeping. Being in the second row of the touching your toes class. <laughs> yeah, think about that one a minute. We got lots of blue collar TV. Stick around, everybody. How many times has this happened to you? <laughs> You've got the best firearm money can buy, but you still can't shoot worth a darn. Well, hunters, fret no more because your problems are over. They are? That's right. Thanks to Perfect Aim, you get a bullseye every time. Give Perfect Aim a try. Okay. <laughs> See, it's as easy as one, two, three. Here's how it works. Simply attach perfect aim and shoot. Our patented destruction spread technology sends pellets in every direction, keeping you safe and killing everything around you. Fine. Thanks, perfect aim. Perfect aim is available wherever weapons of mass destruction are sold illegally. Coming up next, rescue 911. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jim Farnsworth. Tonight we begin in the living room of a modest farm home in Fairfield, Kansas on the night of June 22nd, 2004. <laughs> the Parker family is wrapping up their evening. Uh, uh, well, that'll do for me, sweetheart. I'm gonna go get a bath <laughs> and go to bed. Night, Graham. <laughs> Tom's grandmother went in for a bath. A bath that would change the family's lives forever. Moments later, nature called, and Tom headed to the bathroom.
trauma of seeing a naked 80-year-old female body blinded Tom instantly. Well, it was the last image I'll ever see. She looked like a... like a bloodhound in a shower cap. Mo, oh, what the hell's going on in there? Tom walked in on me while I was taking a bath. Well, put your dad gum robe on. I can't. All that hollering made my back go out. Don't go in there, Daddy. It's horrible. Well, are you all right, Tom? What happened? I can't see, Daddy. Call an ambulance. 911. 911. <laughs> hey, what's the number for 911? Oh, just call information. Ed, dial information. <laughs> information? Yeah, what's the number to 911? One moment, please. The number you requested is 911. Well, hold on, hold on. I gotta get a pen. I don't got paper pen. Oh, yes, sir. Son, you got a pen? I can't see. All right, you ain't gotta get all. <laughs> you know, he's a strawberry. All right, go ahead. Yes, uh, the number you requested is 911. Hold on, go slower. I'm using a strawberry. Nine. All right. One. All right. One. What was your last number again? Uh, the last number was one. One, that's it. I appreciate it. OK, you're welcome, sir. Ed dialed 911. 911, do you have an emergency? Yeah, listen. Uh... My son just saw his grandma naked, now he's gone blind. Okay, now don't panic, sir. I'm dispatching a unit right away. Well, we really appreciate it. I said stay calm! <laughs> EMT team Don Clinton and Jim Mayweather responded immediately. Oh, thank God. Wipe your feet. Hey, he hasn't seen anything since he last saw her, and grandma's in the bathroom. She throwed her back out. <laughs> Careful when you go in there. Even the most seasoned emergency workers couldn't handle the horrifying sight. All I remember is she looked like a bloodhound in a shower cap. I fought in the Gulf War. But the carnage, excuse me, that this woman has left behind has scarred me for life. With his partner out of commission, Don had to think fast. Thanks to years of training and careful planning, he ingeniously rectifies the situation. What can you say except thank you? You're welcome. Who is that? <laughs> You're up here. Look at all them stars. There's a lot of stars. Boy, it sure makes you feel insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Hey, dude, turn that way. You're peeing on my boot. European. Coming up next, Jeff gets to know his new neighbor. And the real bachelor. Who's ready to get her done? Ah, oh, thanks, honey. Hey, hi there. I'm Eugene, president of the Homeowners Association, and your neighbor. Oh, <laughs> right next door. Hi, I'm Forrest. This is my better half, Corky. Corky, how are you, nice Eugene? To meet you. Well, I know you guys are busy unpacking and everything, but our church had a bake sale today, and my wife insisted that I bring you guys some welcome to the neighborhood snickerdoodles. Oh, oh. Our daughter loves snickerdoodles. You have a daughter. How old? Thirteen. No way. Okay. My oldest daughter's turning 13 tomorrow. We're doing a big pool party. You guys ought to come by. Oh, yeah. That sounds fun. 
on. Yeah, yeah. sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, we are all excited about it. We're, we're getting our own mountain bike. Getting a, a mountain, mountain bike. bike. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, hey, whoa, speaking of daughters, here's our little Danielle now. Oh, hi, Danielle. Eugene from right next door. Hi. <gasps> Danielle was all region Little Miss Junior dance squad champion last year. Really? Danielle, why don't you do your dance routine for our new neighbor? That's a great uh, idea. I'll get the music. Yes, yeah, are, are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Danielle, what was that? Oh, I, I am so embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm now, sorry. you do it the way we talked about. Like we rehearsed. Okay. champion right there. Good job, honey. I, I don't know. Isn't isn't that a little advanced for, for 13? I, what do you mean? I th j just, boy, kind of risque. Do you mean sexy? Well, yes, that's that's a little sexy. Well, we cut all the sexy stuff out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honey, why don't you show Eugene what the routine looked like before? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere. Okay. Go, Mama, go. I, I have got to go. It's so late. I've got to go. Well, hey, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see you at the pool party, huh? I'm gonna wear my thong. <laughs> I, I heard it was canceled. Canceled. Shame. Wow, he seemed kind of weird. <laughs> Don't you think 13's a little young for a mountain bike? Well, some people just aren't meant to have kids. <laughs> Tonight, ABC brings you the most important television event of all time. When we throw away the typical handsome brooding reality star and give you a leading man who is a real man. Are you ready to meet your bachelor? <laughs> hey ladies, who's ready to get her done? It's the real bachelor. Good Lord, I'm happy in Rosie O'Donnell at a buffet of ho-hos. Okay, 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 hold still. Uh, uh hold it, hold it. Uh, oh, hey, I got it! Go. <laughs> hold on, let me try Close your eyes, open your mouth. <laughs> tell me that don't stink. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that Natasha. <laughs> you pretty hot. I don't know, though, I can't tell if she's into it. I mean, that girl's got me more frustrated than a deaf mute playing bingo, getting bingo, and trying to holler out the word bingo. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, after he left, I was always kind of searching. Searching for hey, the sweetheart, inner... while you're in the searching mood, why don't you search your little hind end up there and make me a sandwich? <laughs> Man, that girl just don't know how to tell a joke. Good night. She got me more frustrated than the elephant man trying on turtleneck shirts. 
I ain't never said this to no girl before, but you're a little different, so I think I can tell you. I got a pimple on my back that you could have put a gift shop on. You think you could get that someday? I asked Larry if he could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? He asked me to fart in the jacuzzi. <laughs> So this cop pulls me over and he says, you been drinking? I said, no, why is there a fat chick in my back seat? <laughs> That's funny, I don't care who you are. Hey, y'all check this out, check this out. <laughs> Larry. Yes, sir. This is where the rose ceremony would be if there were any women left. Mm -hmm. for a reality show that gets as real as real can get. The Real Bachelor, coming soon. Coming up, it's a surprise visit from Ron White. Ron White, Tell you what, that was the funnest show we've done so far. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. You, you can't say the word funnest. There's no such word as funnest. Fun, funner, funnest. Look it up. <laughs> um, every week at the end of the show, we. just driving by and I saw this thing called Blue Collar TV and I was thinking, you know, I used to have some friends I used to tour with on a thing called Blue Collar Comedy <laughs> Tour. And I was actually just kind of wondering why I was never invited to be a part of the show. Well, there's a very good reason. Well, you, you never asked me to be on this show, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, you didn't I... ask me when I was sober, did you? <laughs> Hey, everybody, I gotta tell you, Ron just got married, by the way. Yes, you know, I was gonna get married one time, but I called it off an hour before the ceremony. Why? Well, she wouldn't take my name. A lot of women don't take the guy's name nowadays. Yeah, but I just thought it'd be cool, both of us named Larry. <laughs> My wife and I just got back from a honeymoon in Greece, and uh, we were on a cruise ship, and we went to Greece. Uh, and I got on the way there, we were spending some time by the pool, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time out there, because there was one guy that was wearing a really scant, scant bathing suit, and I swear, it looked like he had a squirrel in his pants. <laughs> Now, if it had been me, I'd have been holding a picture frame right there. <laughs> a mirror, because I'd like looking at it, you know? <laughs> uh, it's good to have you back. <laughs> you, you know the thing that I liked best about your is the food, just incredible food. That comes to an end when you get back and your new wife wants to cook. <laughs> She's not a very good cook. It got a little better when she figured out that smoke alarm's not a timer. <laughs> Hey, the, the first meal she cooked in our new house, I couldn't eat it. I gave it to the dog. He started licking his butt. <laughs> she comes in and she goes, what's he doing? I said, it looks like he's trying to get the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> Honey, I know you're out there. I love you. <laughs> That's all the Blue Collar TV we got today. Right, take the ball, right. Next week.
week on Blue Collar TV, it's Hick Eye for the Queer Guy. Oh, <laughs> and you know I'm about to end up in this scumbag. You got about three seconds to start coming clean. Special guest star Ron White. You can't <laughs> talk to her like that. Oh. Welcome to Blue Collar TV. Tonight, the topic is TV. All right, how many people here own or have ever seen a television? All right, let me say right up front, I watch TV and I am proud of it. I came from a long line of TV watchers. And we learned a lot from watching TV. Just nothing you could really use. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't tell you who our congressman was, but we could sing every single word of the Oscar Mayer Wiener commercial. <laughs> yes. Our checkbook was not balanced, but we could nail the actual retail price of the showcase on The Price is Right. I mean, my family could not eat unless the TV was on. One time, our television was broken for almost a week. We literally almost starved to death. <laughs> and today, we have 700 channels. 700 channels. It is mind-boggling. And can you imagine if we didn't have the remote control? I mean, the channel knob would be the size of a, <laughs> of a tractor tire. have 700 channels. We had three channels when I was growing up. And if the president was on, your night was shot. <laughs> the president's on! He's on every channel! We're gonna miss Flipper! <laughs> we got a lot of blue-collar TV. Let's put this thing right now. Come on, guys. from the show. Yeah, man, we are. Now, that is an unusual accent. Where are you from, man? Uh, I'm from the West Village in New York. <laughs> New York? That's a New York accent? Yeah, I guess so. 
<laughs> All right, let's get to work. It says here. Oh, why'd you give him this? He can't read. He can't read a lick. Don't <laughs> give it. <laughs> hey, little devil, looks like here you fell in love with somebody at work. Oh, wow. I did. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. we're coming over Ooh. for dinner, and oh. so I wanted to make a good first impression. Well, it ain't gonna be here, Elle. This candle stinks. Smell oh. that. I'm gonna hurt. It's even clean on top of stuff. I Whoa. dusted it just before you came. <laughs> Fellas, we got about four hours to turn this little dollhouse into a shagging wagon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get it done, hey, oh. hey. I have a coworker who is cuter than cute, but it never goes past a hug, so I am hoping that the trashy trio can hook me up because... <laughs> no, 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 guys, that's worth $8,000. No, 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 put that down. Is this part of the show? Seriously? That's my tower. This is my breath and my tower. Hey. No! Gone. No! No, no, no! Ellie! Huh? Come in here, man. Okay. Oh, God! No, it was not me. You can thank Jack for that. You are sick. You are sick. Hey, listen, here around the crap. You're gonna wanna throw some gun and hunting magazines there, so you know, you always got something to read. Uh oh, okay. somebody come back for an encore. Let's what? get that. <laughs> Ellie, this medicine cabinet is a mess, man. Look at all these creams oh, and lotions. That... You know, you don't wanna think you're already living with a woman, dude. You gotta get rid of this. Okay. See, you wouldn't wanna be, dude. Oh, that was what is that? Oh, uh, that's just for my, well... In the top. Okay. <laughs> so, for dinner, we are starting with a gorgonzola pear and walnut salad and, of course, a $300 tin of beluga caviar. Which we will top off with an 89-cent can of meaty chili. What? No, chili? Takes the edge off the fish tank. Matt, nothing will peel her panties faster than a $9 box of wine. Break it through a straw. Hey, buddy, here's your problem right here. You got too many sleeves in here. Good oh. night. I bet you got almost 29 sleeves. You what? need to whip oh. those sleeves off. No. Give women a good whip of your sleeves. Oh, God, right listen, the show is going to pay me back for those, right? Because some of those are Gucci. Seriously. Oh, dear God, that's Crystal. Are you going to thank me come summertime? <laughs> Well, Elliot, our work is done. What do you think? <laughs> Look, he's speechless. I'm telling you, hey, you are good to go, buddy. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. Seriously, look at me. It's about confidence. You think you're gonna get it? You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. <laughs> here we go, fellas. Here's the payoff right here. Fingers, Elliot! Hi. Hi. That's got to be the ugliest girl I've ever seen. Oh, Elliot, I love your place. It's so butch. I.E. totally makes me hot. <laughs> yes, sir! Yeah. But she loves it! Oh, she loves it! Now, way to go, Elliot! That's <laughs> her confidence, buddy! When we return, special guest, Ron White. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Welcome to Hot You or Hit You, the new game show that puts your drinking buddies to the test. Here's the man of the hour, Ron White. Okay, I'm Ron White, and I'm hosting a game show about getting hammered and picking a fight with your best friend. I can't imagine what made him think of me. <laughs> Let's drag out our first contestant. He's from Mitchell, South Dakota, and he loves getting tanked with his friends. Please welcome Greg Yarborough. Greg, welcome to the Yeah! Oh, this is gonna be fun, Ron. You have no idea. <laughs> Okay, Greg, your friend Kyle's been drinking in our soundproof drinking booth for the past few hours now. 
We're going to give you a phrase to say to Kyle, and then your severely inebriated buddy will either hug you or... Yeah. yeah. I know what my vote is. Okay. Here's your first phrase. How is your mom doing? What do you think, Greg? Is he going to hug you or hit you? Tell you what, Ron, we get drunk all the time, and he usually ends up hitting me. Well, don't take it personal, Greg, but you look like one of those guys who'd be fun to hit. Now, <laughs> what's your answer? Hit! I hope you're right. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Hey, hey, buddy, how's your mom doing? Why are you talking about my mom? <laughs> I truly love this game. That's one right answer for Greg. Woo! <laughs> what are you, a Mormon sweetheart? Hit it. Come on. That's good. Okay, here's your second phrase. You're on my eyes really starting to hurt. Suck right. it up, Greg. You're doing great. Okay. The phrase is, I saw your girlfriend the other day and she looked really hot. What's Kyle gonna do? Hug you or hit you? Well, he's gonna hit me if I say that. I think so too, but there's only one way to find out. <laughs> hey, buddy, I saw your girlfriend the other day. She looked really hot. Huh? She said, oh, Sarah. I love her, man. I love her. You gotta try it. Hey, Kyle, Greg wants to know how your mom's doing. No, I don't. Well, you got to talk you... about my oh, mom. No, no. Oh, that would be good. Do I get any points for that? Oh, sorry. Oh. It came after the hug. Sorry, no points. Cheers. <laughs> Here's your next phrase. Was that your best shot you hit like a girl? No, 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 no. That's just begging him to plow me. Uh, here, say it to her. She's not gonna hit you. What's going on? Be a man. Is that your best shot? You hit like a girl. You can't no, talk no, like no, that no, to no. her. <laughs> oh. Come on, you wanna take a little shot at him? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you hit like a girl. You can't talk to her like that. Oh! Well, that's all the time we have for today. So join in next week for more Hug You or Hit You! All contestants on Hug You or Hit You receive a two-week vacation on a world-famous Lake Erie Booze Cruise, where the drinks are free and so is the fun! <laughs>
Clean kill. Hollow point from a 30 odd six. Sounds like our man. What's the body count? 14. Let's see what's left in the Vic. CSI Greater Greensboro Tri County Area. <laughs> What, we got us a poacher? Maybe, but he sure wasn't after the prize. Got the murder weapon. Dust it for prints? Yeah. All I got was hoof prints. It looks like the slug fractured the sagittal crest right between the nasal and the lacrimal duct. Come on, Doc, give it to me in English. I got no idea. I saw that on CSI Miami. That's interesting. Talk to me. The long show trace amounts of ether. So he was drugged? Or he was into huff? Got a match on the DNA. We've got our suspect. Well, well, well. What do we got here? You tough? You don't look so tough. Are you tough? Okay, you can come clean, and we can do this the easy way, or you can sit there with that smirk on your face, and we can make this a living hell. You know I'm about had enough of this scumbag. You got about three seconds to start coming clean, or I'm gonna turn you into venison stew. You hear me? You're going down. You're going down. You are going come down. Come on. Okay. I'm the deer's attorney. Don't say anything, dear. I'm calling Peter. Now back off, guys. My client isn't talking. Let's get some coffee. Hey, Nick. Yeah? What day is it? Wednesday. Where are you going with this? Deer season just started. Stay tuned for CSI Dayton, Ohio, followed by CSI Kellogg, Idaho. Stick around for some I Believes on Blue Collar TV. But before we go, I would like to thank our good friend and special guest this week, Ron White, everybody. <laughs> and since you're here, I would like to ask you to join us for a few of the I Believes that we do here. Jeff, I'd be honored. I'd love to. Folks, we would like to leave you with a few simple words of inspiration tonight. <laughs> I believe that a marriage won't last if the first time you saw your wife in lingerie, you had to pay a cover charge. <laughs> I believe that all lap dances should be tax deductible. I believe that the Rolling Stones have gathered a little moth. <laughs> I believe if you have low enough SAT scores, you should be able to park in the handicapped space. <laughs> I park. I parked out in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that I set off metal detectors at airports because I have buns of steel.
They're starting to get a little rusty. <laughs> I believe that a bad football halftime show is still better than a soccer game. <laughs> I believed it. If I had a dollar for every time my dad told me he loved me, I'd have... Well, money ain't really important here. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> I believe that two's company and three something I'm having a hard time talking my wife into. <laughs> I believe that it's not possible to study for a rectal exam. <laughs> Especially if you're cramming. <laughs> on Blue Collar TV. I'm a pothead. <laughs> Look at how much... Human stunt torso, Weevil Knievel. Rhino! Welcome to Blue Collar TV. Tonight's topic is bad jobs. Uh, how many people here have ever had a bad job? My first job was cutting grass for an elderly neighbor. Now, she had like this acre of stubble on the side of the steepest hill you've ever seen in your life. And her mower was this half diesel number on two confederate wagon wheels <laughs> and after just 10 short hours of slinging rocks and soup cans off the side of my head I was able to collect my dollar <laughs> yeah. I learned that day bad job requirement number one is low wages Though not all bad jobs have low wages, because I'm sure proctologists make a lot of money. <laughs> but given the choice, I'd rather cut the Widow Logan's grass again. <laughs> so maybe we should modify the statement to all bad jobs have low wages or rubber gloves. <laughs> Some bad jobs involve danger. I went to school with a guy named Loop that worked at a factory that posted how much you got paid if you lost an eye or a hand or a leg or something. <laughs> Any job that posts a price list for your body parts is a bad job. 
And you know what? There's warning signs to a bad job. Like, if your boss asks you to cash a check for him on your first day of work, <laughs> it might be a bad job. If you can't wear your work clothes in the house because of the blood and feathers, <laughs> it might be a bad job. <laughs> if there is absolutely no chance that you will be fired, you know the kind of job I'm talking about where you could show up drunk and pee in the boss's coffee and still be in line for a promotion? That might be a bad job. We've all had them. The key is not to settle. You gotta keep clawing and save your money and then maybe one day you can pay a skinny kid with a mullet a dollar to cut your grass. We got a lot of blue colors here. Continuing adventures of human stunt torso, Weevil Knievel! Hi, I'm Jackie Willette from WROT, and I'm down at Potter's Park with famous Daredevil stuntman, Weevil Knievel. So, how's it going, Weevil? It's all good, Jackie. Now, Weevil, um, can you tell us about today's stunt? Uh, actually, Jackie, it's a very simple stunt. Excuse uh, me. I'll handle this. Uh, this is Travis, my stunt coordinator. Hi. This stunt is not quite as simple as Weebs is making it sound. What we're going to do is strap him into that there launch chair where he will become 47 pounds of flying flesh launched over 15 trucks through a fiery flame and hoop into a tub of very cold, very shallow water. Are you all nervous that this stunt might go as badly as some of your others? You know, Jackie, this is the last time I'm going to answer this question. You know, when you've done over 15,000 stunts like we have, sure, there's going to be a couple of hundred that don't turn out the way you had planned. Uh, did the helicopter dive stunt go wrong? Yes. Did the human shark bait stunt go wrong? Obviously. But you know, living on the edge, that's what us Knievels do. I mean, when we get thrown off the horse, we get back up on the horse. Or have somebody put us back up on the horse. That's cute. Oh, easy, easy, easy. All right, fellas, let's do it. What an inspiration. Now remember, kids, that Weeble is a professional, and this is very dangerous, so do not try this at home. Whoa, 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 that's not a handle. <laughs> so, Weeble, can you tell us what's going to happen now? Well, yeah, Jackie, uh, for safety's sake, basically what we like to do is run... Fire in the hole! <laughs> These practice runs are very authentic and realistic. Fire in the hole! Let's just go a lot higher. Being as these are practice runs, wouldn't it be better to just use a sack full of sand? Yeah, Trav, why couldn't we? Fire in the hole! I think we're good to go. All right, let's clean him up. And now for the fun part. All we gotta do is just get Weeble into this vest. What vest? The exploding vest. I am just trying to sell tickets, Weeble. Well, this is the first time I've heard anything about an exploding vest. You know, we talked about it yesterday. When did we talk about this? I'll tell you when we talked about it, when you was in the shower. You know when I'm in the shower, I, I can't. Fire in the hole! Continuing adventures of human stunt torso, Weevil Cunnibal.
coming up on Blue Collar TV. And I'm just gonna clamp it right here on this wire. Wow! Yeah! <laughs>
Dude. <laughs> <laughs> 150 bucks. I am so sorry. Yeah, really. How much was it? 150 $50. bucks. You got 150 no. bucks. Please, nice. God, tell me that was not a good vase. Did he just <laughs> break it? We did it on purpose, Jackass. I set that up. It was so <laughs> My heart is pounding because I've walked around here and look at the price tags on everything. <laughs> How come my daggone deal spins when I touch it? It's supposed to stay It's like straight. a gas pedal. Where's the gas pedal? Down on your right. Oh, shit. <laughs> From special class. Look at that. He took the short bus to the pottery studio. Okay, now what I do. Dude, my throttle stick. Seriously. Well, then go into the pits. Get it going. You got to spin it a little faster. Get it going. Yeah, just really fast. I I'm just kidding. Get it out of there. <laughs> I forgot to take my foot off. It's perfect. <laughs> I can't. I'm getting good at this party. Dude, you're turning me on. Knock it off. I call this Ode to a Dog. <laughs> I tell you, we had a top 10 pot till we blew a right rear tire and uh, brought her in the garage, uh, in and out all day long, and it's such a shame because the guys worked so hard on it, but we ended up with an ashtray. <laughs> huh? This is called Everybody Can Kiss My Ass. <laughs> I call this ouch. guy's head and kind of hollow it out a little bit. If I had a dime for every time I had heard that. <laughs> What's going on, lady? <laughs> What'd you make? I made a little vase. Oh, wow. Well, if that's what you were going Is for. Is that it all day? That's all you made? Look at that right there. Huh? Been... I've been in here 10 minutes and I got that thing done. You still <laughs> got a great piece of nothing. All right, now this is the last step in the process. You are going to get these things fired. We're going to put them in the kiln. Bye, little Jimmy. Bye. Cool. It's the last you'll see of them. Let me ask this. You mind warming these up for us? <laughs> sure. Thanks. I'm starving. It'll take about two seconds. Thank you, Eric. We had a ball. I hope we didn't disrupt your shop too no, much. No, it's not too bad. It's well, fine. Thank you very much. Oh, but hey, you know, I hate to say anything, but this is a $1,300 vase. Is someone going to pay for this, please? Uh, Larry, this thing's $1,300. Bucks. $1,300? Bucks? I ain't got $1,300. Bucks. No, you're paying for it. I... Oh. Uh, call the police. No, I, I can't. Bothering you. All right. When the bus driver gets off the bus, okay. who shuts the door? I have no idea.
coming up, the boys have a little show and tell from their pottery class. Right, this is a bona fide slee stack from Land of the Lost right here. Say we, we, we had a ball at the pottery class, and we decided when we were walking in right. that we had a $10 bet, and we were going to let the audience decide right. who made the best thing while we were there, okay? Uh, so you go first. Well, all right. This is a bona fide slee stack from Land of the Lost right here. Your turn. Well, I went a different route, so I made out. Wait, 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 I'm not done. <laughs> and this is my uncle after four eggnogs at the family Christmas party. But, 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 but before you vote, I gotta say this, because we had such a good time there. After you guys left, I went back. You went and, back? Yeah. Well, you ladies, can you roll this in? There was no rule about that. Yeah. I, I, I was in a hurry. Didn't have a lot of time, didn't have a mirror, so I, you know, kind of went from memory. That's cheap. But, but here's my other piece that I made. <laughs> it's nice. Break it. break it, Larry, break it. <laughs> Don't you do it. Good night, good night. Next week on Blue Collar TV, Jeff can't find the remote. The remote! The remote! Where is the remote? And a sneak preview of Jeff's upcoming major motion picture. He's a no-nonsense cop who plays by his own rules. Welcome to Blue Collar TV. Yeah. All right, our theme for this week is marriage. And before I even start talking about this one, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I love my wife, OK? <laughs> and when I talk about marriage, these are my observations of other people. They have nothing to do with us, honey. You are still as beautiful as the day I married you. That being said, that being said, there is nothing that prepares you for marriage. Now, see, some people will tell you that dating does, but that's just not true. Because dating implies that the other person is always going to be on time, dressed up, and ready to fool around. <laughs> and when we talk about marriage, it's actually two separate things, because you have the ceremony 
which is kind of like a big party to distract you from what you're about to get yourself <laughs> into. And then there's marriage. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, marriage is work, which means there are husbands and wives all over America coming home from work to start another job they're not even getting paid for. In fact, if you do this job poorly enough, you have to pay to get out of it. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, well, if marriage is so much work, why do people want to get married? You know, and I think women want to get married because they realize life is a long road that is full of ups and downs, and they want a soulmate to share the highs with and to lean on someone during the low spots. Men, on the other hand, want to get married because they realize the honeymoon is guaranteed sex five days in a row. <laughs> you know, my grandparents were married for 54 years, so I figured they had a little wisdom on this subject. And one time I asked my granddad, I said, what is the secret to being married for a long, long time? You know what he said? It's simple. You don't leave and you don't die. <laughs> And I, and I know that he loved my grandmother, but I just wondered how much loving, you know, was still going on. Because the loving is easy when you first get married. I mean, everything is so new, and they have all this cute little lingerie for young couples. But what about lingerie for couples that have been together for like 20 years? <laughs> Nobody has cornered the market on this stuff until now. <laughs> Like the classic tube socks and sweatpants ensemble. Now that is sexy. Just when you thought the honeymoon was over, romance makes a comeback. With this thing. Nothing screams I'm in the mood louder than some high-waisted granny panties. And that kind of bra you'll find on a lunchroom lady. <laughs> this thing has got 75 cast iron hooks in the back of it, and if they blow, somebody's getting hurt. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, Mom. <laughs> Melt those winter chills away with this hot outfit. Please kiss me, I'm Ukrainian men's boxer shorts. Perfectly complement that ratty old blanket from the back of the closet that's covered in cat hair. <laughs> and for those husbands out there who think they're actually gonna get some action on their 25th anniversary, this little number subtly hints, not tonight, honey, I'm radioactive. <laughs> These gals are ready for bed and not much else as they sport the best in the been married a long time lingerie collection. <laughs> Stick around, there's lots more blue collar TV. Come on. Coming up next, Jeff Foxworthy like you've never seen him before. You might be shopping for dentures. <laughs> Okay, you guys know what bugs me. People who think that all I do is you might be a redneck jokes. I mean, and sure, there, there's some good ones. You know, like if you work without a shirt on and so does your husband, <laughs> you might be a redneck. Or if you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. And sure, they're funny, but I don't need them. You know, I don't want to be defined as the you-might-be guy. I have moved on. I've got a TV show. I just finished a movie. In fact, we have the trailer for that movie here tonight. I want to show you this. Jeff Foxworthy like you've never seen him before. Jeff Foxworthy is Jeff Fox, worthy of Academy Award consideration. He's a no-nonsense cop who plays by his own rules. You don't tell me where the drugs are stashed. You might be shopping for dentures. <laughs> right, tough. This is a new Foxworthy who's bringing down the bad guys and loving his lady. I love you, Jeff Fox. 
Yeah, well, if you put on this sexy little number right here, you might be my love slave in five minutes. Take me. The mob couldn't stop Fox, so they took the one thing he loved the most. is an empty heart and a thirst for revenge. Fox, it's a tragedy what's happened to you and your family. But listen, do not take the law in your own hands, I beg of you. If you think that I'm just gonna stand here and do nothing while the butchers that destroyed my family are out running the streets and a bunch of crooked cops are gonna pretend to do something when in reality they do nothing, and day after day, I gotta hear about how they're gonna be caught. And when they finally are caught, they rig the jury and only get probation for killing my wife. If that's what you think, you might be dumber than a bag of hammers. Dude, lighten up. I don't understand how he sold 30 million albums. I don't get it. Bumbo, gumbo, whatever, dude. An extremely different Foxworthy, because when this wily fox gets cornered, the hounds don't stand a chance. Well, Fox, is six against one. <laughs> You're a dead man. Kill him. If you... Oh. Uh, think you... Uh. 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 ...can beat me... Uh. ...after what you did to my wife... Uh. You might be a dead man. This whole new Jeff Foxworthy stars as Jeff Fox in You Might Be. Coming to a theater near you. Well, are you kids ready for this? Yeah! I'm Larry the Cable Guy, and I've got something here that takes a huge bite out of my hind end. <laughs> my little niece brought home the other day this book full of fairy tales. It's been all politically corrected up. That's right. Now in this country, I guess fairy tales are offensive for the kids. <laughs> so I'd like to read one for you now. It's the story formerly known as Little Red Riding Hood. It's now called Vertically Challenged Native American Riding Hood <laughs> and the Endangered Wolf. <laughs> Once upon a time, Vertically Challenged Native American Riding Hood <laughs> wanted to take a vacation at her chronologically advanced grandma's house. On the way, she ran into a wolf that had recently been put on the endangered species list. <laughs> hey, where are you going, vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood? <laughs> said the wolf. I'm going to my grandma's house for a togetherness celebration. <laughs> the wolf told vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood a shortcut to grandma's house. Unfortunately, the shortcut was through a federally protected wetlands. <laughs> so vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood was fined for disturbing the fragile ecosystem. <laughs> when she finally got to Grandma's house, she saw that Grandma looked much different than usual, but accepted and celebrated their differences. <laughs> What plus-sized eyes you have, Grandma, the better to see and not judge you with. <laughs> and what plus-sized teeth you have, the better to eat you with. But I can't because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> and I also have irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> irritable bowel syndrome, and he doesn't even eat her. I tell you what, this book is full of tree huggers and tofu farting fairies.
I'll tell you how it ends right here. I walk into Grandma's house, shoot the wolf, chuck Grandma and old folks home, get a little red riding hood out of that hood, and we shack up and eat wolf steaks. Now, that's a fairy tale. That's right. That's right. Eat it in. Just like some fart. Coming up on Blue Collar TV. Hey, honey, if you need me for the next nine hours or so, I'm going to be in the den watching football. Okay, Fred. If you need me, I'll be staining the deck, varnishing the stairs, and hanging drywall. All right, have fun, honey. Man, I have dreamed about this all week long. Football all day. Let's see, I'm set. I got, got my ribs, my nachos, my beer, my diet pills. We are good to go here, baby. Welcome back to a pregnancy story. Jennifer, our mommy-to-be, has gone into labor and is about to give birth. Oh, oh man, man, wrong channel. Where's the remote? Where is the Jennifer's remote? Jennifer's contractions is are coming this? very close together remote. now. Where is Let's see if we can get a close <laughs> I had the stupid thing. I had it just a while back, the remote. Where is the remote here? I can't find the okay. dadgum remote. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Sandra, help me. I can't find the remote. Where did you hide it? I didn't hide it. You lost it. I did not lose it. Please, Sandra, tell me. Where is it? <laughs> the remote. The remote. Come on. Help me here. Where is the remote? I Grandpa, Grandpa, that's where it is. You're hiding the remote in there. Why don't you just get up and change the channel manually? Manually? Are you insane, Sandra? I'm not a caveman here. Come on. It's just a football game anyway. Just a football game? It's the last preseason game. <laughs> Sarah, I'm watching the miracle of childbirth. I'm gonna miss the kickoff. Come on. I can't find the remote. Can anybody help me? <laughs> Come on. Did you look in the utility drawer? The what? The utility drawer. Well, why didn't anybody tell me we had a utility drawer? you a hundred times about the utility drawer. Sandra, I'm telling you, it's not in here. It is not in here. It is not in... It is not in... I found it! Sandra! Sandra! I found it, Sandra! I found it! Woo-hoo! It won't change. This is the VCR remote! <laughs> the remote! Where is the remote, Sandra? I cannot find... Where is the remote? The remote! Where is the remote? The remote! Help me, Sandra! Help me! Help me! Where is the remote? What I have? It's the remote. Yeah, it's a boy. It's a <laughs> yes, go, go, go! It's touchdown! 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 Oh, oh! I gotta call Jerry. I gotta call Jerry. Sandra, where's the phone? Sandra, where's the phone? Hammer. Hey, honey, 
I sure could use a sandwich. What do you want? Hammer turkey. <laughs> turkey sounds good. When we return, why don't we just take some questions from the audience? Yeah. How do you three keep so sexy? It's just a gift. enjoyed the show tonight and we were talking about stage how we would close it up and we decided why don't we just take some questions from the audience yeah. so uh, if anybody has any questions we know everything <laughs> yeah right <laughs> we do All right. here comes yeah. one I have a question for Larry yes I will answer does your sister really have all those moles? <laughs> for all you don't know, I got a sister covering moles. Uh, she, she, we called her Old Moly. And then she went to church and got saved, and we called her uh, uh, Holy Moly. <laughs> and uh, she just married a Mexican fella in Texas, and now we call her Guacamole. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> For Jeff Foxworthy. Okay. That'd be him. Yeah. That's him. How old is your daughter and where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have two daughters. They're ages 10 and 12, and they're behind a chain link fence right now. Look at him, my daughter! <laughs> I'll take this one. <laughs> this is for all three of you. Okay. How do you three keep so sexy? Uh. <laughs> well, on my part, <laughs> it, it's just a gift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next two. I was just born with it. The Lord gave me this. And death. I live in a house full of women. I am around so much estrogen, it just oozes out of me. <laughs> Thank you. Very By good. the way, Larry does get a lot of women, but they're like ships in the Bermuda Triangle. They show up, and then you never hear from them again. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was living with her for a while until she found out I was there. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. You Good night, there. everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Mitchell, Brooks, and Dunn. We'd heard that y'all were secretly married in one of these chapels. Something about a Elvis impersonator just kind of gets us fired up. Ron White. He looks just like he's sleeping. Oh, he doesn't. Montgomery Gentry. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is a thrill for us right here. Outtakes. I'm Eugene from next door. And brand new scenes. Who would bottle bear? Look out! It's a farting bear! Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to our very first Blue Collar TV special. Now, tonight we have put together an hour of some of our favorite sketches, outtakes, and some real funny stuff you've never seen before. And to help me celebrate this hour, half of our cast has joined us. Wait, where's the other half? It's kind of a sore subject. They're watching Joey. <laughs> yes, it's tonight. But we have a great show for you. And these guys have worked so hard this summer, I decided as a way to say thank you that I would take all of them deer hunting this weekend. Deer hunting? Yeah. That's you brought right. us out here to do deer hunting? Yes, we're, we're, we're going deer hunting. Whoa, whoa, Jeff, Jeff, I thought we were going to your house to watch Deer Hunter. Hey, why would you bring a gun to watch the deer hunter? No, we're going deer hunting. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. I, I, I'm sorry, Jeff, but... I, I've changed my mind. I, I don't believe in guns. Ashley, oh, will you take this? I can't. Do I pull the trigger? No, don't don't pull the trigger. And by deer hunting, you mean that we catch the deer and then we throw it back, right? No, Brooke, that's fishing. We're not throwing anything back. We're hunting deer. We're deer hunting. I'm telling you, you guys are going to dig it. It is such a development of the senses. I'm telling you, you get out of that city mode and kind of get back to nature. I've been doing it so long, I don't have to see a deer anymore. I don't have to hear a deer. I can just feel it. I feel it when the deer are around. Do you, do you have that feeling now? Well, no, I mean, we're, we're taping the opening of the show, but if deer were around, yeah, I'd, I'd feel it. You'll see it, you'll see it in action. We got a lot of blue collar TV, so stick around. It's exciting. I'll get it. Ah, oh, thanks, honey. Hey, hi there, I'm Eugene, president of the Homeowners Association and your neighbor. Oh, <laughs> right next door. Hi, I'm Forrest, this is my better half, Corky. Corky, how are you, nice Eugene? Nice to meet you. Well, I know you guys are busy unpacking and everything, but our church had a bake sale today, and my wife insisted that I bring you guys some welcome to the neighborhood snickerdoodles. Oh, our daughter loves snickerdoodles. You have a daughter, how old? 13. No way. My, my oldest daughter's turning 13 tomorrow. We're doing a big pool party. You guys ought to come by. Oh, yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, we are all excited about it. We're, we're getting her a mountain bike. Getting a, a mountain, mountain bike. bike. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, hey, whoa, speaking of daughters, here's our little Danielle now. Oh, hi, Danielle. Eugene from right next door. Hi. <gasps> Danielle was all region Little Miss Junior dance squad champion last year. Really? Danielle, why don't you do your dance routine for our new neighbor? That's a great <laughs> idea. I'll get the music. Yes, yeah, are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm now you sorry. do it the way we talked about. Like we rehearsed. Okay. champion right there. Good job, honey. I, I don't know. Isn't, isn't that a little advanced for, for 13? I, what do you mean? I th just, boy, kind of risque. Do you mean sexy? Yes, that's, that's a little sexy. 
Well, we cut all the sexy stuff out. Uh. <laughs> Honey, why don't you show Eugene what the routine looked like before? Oh, oh no, 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 you're, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Go, Mama, go. Put those away, put them away. Oh, Lord, look at the time. Look at the time. I, I have got to go, it's so late. I've got to go. Well, hey, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see you at the pool party, huh? I'm gonna wear my thong. <laughs> I, I heard it was canceled, canceled. Shame. Wow, he seemed kind of weird. <laughs> Don't you think 13's a little young for a mountain bike? Well, some people just aren't meant to have kids. Hey! <laughs> I am Eugene from Mexico. <laughs> So that's a snickerdoodle. <laughs> that's it, baby. <laughs> you liking that? was that close to my face, that close. I got news for you, my friend. That wasn't my butt. <laughs> uh. Welcome to On the Red Carpet with Dean Engelberry. <laughs> Folks, this is such a thrill. We are here with a country music legendary duo Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, this is a thrill for us right here. Let's go. Well, friends, the moment we've been waiting for all night, country music legends, Brooks and Dunn. How are you, fellas? We're good, buddy. We was concerned about this. We'd heard that y'all was secretly married in one of these chapels here in Vegas. Would you like to elaborate? Something about a Elvis impersonator just kind of gets us fired up. You One know? You're not alone. If there's drinking in an Elvis impersonator, you can have it nullified by the Pope, and that's the law. <laughs> Four of these guys made it big in the country music business. They used to tinker with cars a little bit. Uh, let me ask you this. Larry's truck is making the weirdest noise right now. Not when it's running, but if you come to a stop, it'll kind of do like a... No, 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 no it's more of a... Let me ask you this. Do you have any moles that you would like me to check for irregularities? <laughs> He's been asking I, everybody I, this. I've been mole free have for you a been whole mole year. Free? Cause yeah. I'll feel on you if you No, want. I'm I am definitely mole free. Oh, 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 no, no. Hey friends, we're here with Dina Carter. Dina, let's go on and settle this right off the bat. I'm telling you, it's true. Is that his baby? <laughs> Don't lie to him now. <laughs> Seven months ago in El Camino <laughs> at that drive-in picture show. <laughs> no, no, it's more of a... No, it's more of a... Coming up, Jeff works wonders with America's youth. Sam, you, I want you to burp the alphabet for all these people. <laughs> Is that a deer? No, oh, that's a bird. It's a bird. 
I hope this deer shows up soon so we can kill it and go home. I'm getting cold. It's not going to happen. It's all wrong. The, the wind has shifted. You feel it on the back of your neck? We need to turn around and have it in our face. We need to watch this way. Oh, yeah, this is better. Ah, this is much better. Stick with me, guys. I know what I'm doing. Is that a deer? Do you not think I would feel it if a deer was close by? You don't feel it. I am the deer whisperer. Oh, man, look, this is like a real place. Well, it's cool in here. That's all I care about. It is cool. Hey, there. Hey, how's it How going? are you, Jeff Foxworthy? Welcome to Mudfire Pottery. Thank you, Bill Lingvall, Larry hey, the Cable Bill Guy. Lingvall. Hey, look, nice to meet you. I'm a pothead. Hey, be careful with that. <laughs> look, <I'm> a... Dude. <laughs> Dude. Dude. <laughs> 150 <laughs> bucks. I am so sorry. How much was it? 150 $50. bucks. $150. Please, God, tell me that was not a good vase. Did he just break it? We just knocked this to the I set that up. My heart is pounding because I've walked around here and looked at the price tags on everything. How can my daggone deal spins when I touch it? It's supposed to stay It's like certain. a gas pedal. Where's the gas right, pad? Down on your right. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> special class. Look at that. <laughs> he took the short bus to the pottery studio. OK, now what I do? Dude, my throttle's sticking. Seriously. Well, then go into the pits. Get it going. You got to spin a little faster. Get it going. Yeah, just really fast. Hey. I'm, I'm with the kids. Get it out of there. <laughs> my wife forgot to take my foot off. This is perfect. <laughs> I can't. I, I'm getting good at this party. Dude, you're turning me on. <laughs> Knock it out. I call this Ode to a Dog. <laughs> I tell you, we had a top 10 pot until we blew a right rear tire and uh, brought her in the garage uh, in and out all day long. And it's such a shame because the guys worked so hard on it, but we end up with an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> huh? This is called Everybody Can Kiss My Ass. <laughs> I call this, ouch. guy's head and kind of hollow it out a little bit. If I had a dime for every time I had heard that. <laughs> What's going on, lady? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you make? I made a little face. Oh, wow. Well, if that's what you were going Is for. Is that it all day? That's all you made? Look at that right there. Huh? That's fabulous. I've been in here 10 minutes and I got that thing done. You still got a gray piece of nothing. All right, now this is the last step in the process. You are going to get these things fired. We're going to put them in the kiln. Bye, little Jimmy. Bye. Yeah. It's the last you'll see of them. Let me ask you this. You mind warming these up for us? <laughs> sure. Thanks. I'm starving. It'll take about two seconds. 
Thank you, Eric. We had a ball. I hope we didn't disrupt your shop too no, much. No, it's not too bad. It's well, fine. Thank you very much. Oh, but hey, you know, I hate to say anything, but this is $1,300 base. Is someone going to pay for this, please? Uh, Larry, this thing's $1,300. Bucks. $1,300? Bucks? I got $1,300. Bucks. No, you're paying for it. I... No, I, I can't. Hey, you want to go to a funeral with me tomorrow? I got nobody to go with. You mean like on a date? No, man. I just don't like going to those things by myself. The bodies creep me out. Because you know, everybody says, oh, they look so natural. <laughs> like, no, they don't. I never saw my granddad walking around in lipstick and eyeshadow. <laughs> that you know of. He's so tranquil. He looks just like he's sleeping. No, he doesn't. <laughs> there. Now he looks like he's sleeping. <laughs> All right. Well, are you kids ready for this? I'm Larry the Cable Guy, and I've got something here that takes a huge bite out of my hind end. <laughs> my little niece brought home the other day this book full of fairy tales. It's been all politically corrected up. That's right. Now in this country, I guess fairy tales are offensive for the kids. <laughs> so I'd like to read one for you now. It's the story formerly known as Little Red Riding Hood. It's now called Vertically Challenged Native American Riding Hood <laughs> and the Endangered Wolf. <laughs> Once upon a time, Vertically Challenged Native American Riding Hood <laughs> wanted to take a vacation at her chronologically advanced grandma's house. On the way, she ran into a wolf that had recently been put on the endangered species list. <laughs> hey, where are you going, vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood? <laughs> said the wolf. I'm going to my grandma's house for a togetherness celebration. <laughs> the wolf told vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood a shortcut to grandma's house. Unfortunately, the shortcut was through a federally protected wetlands. <laughs> so vertically challenged Native American Riding Hood was fined for disturbing the fragile ecosystem. <laughs> when she finally got to Grandma's house, she saw that Grandma looked much different than usual, but accepted and celebrated their difference. <laughs> What plus-sized eyes you have, Grandma, the better to see and not judge you with. <laughs> and what plus-sized teeth you have, the better to eat you with. But I can't because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> and I also have irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> irritable bowel syndrome, and he doesn't even eat her. I tell you what, this book is full of tree huggers and tofu farting fairies. I'll tell you how it ends right here. I walk into Grandma's house, shoot the wolf, chuck Grandma and old folks home, get a little red riding hood out of that hood, and we shack up and meet wolf steaks. Now that's a fairy tale. Right there. That's right. Get it in. Let's light some parts. <laughs> My little niece brought home this book the other day, full of fairy tales that have been politically corrected up for today's society. <laughs> so I'd like to read you one, all right? Goes like this, here. This is, uh, this is the, uh, I know what it is. It's in here somewhere. 
Now, how in the world? It's gone again. It is gone. I swear, it is gone. It ain't in here. I found it. Sam, I want you to burp the alphabet for all these people. I'm sure Sam's mother's bosom is swelling with pride right now. He just said he could fart the times table. <laughs> Coming up, I've got one of my favorite products. It is a bottle of dough in heat urine. Go, girl. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Now it's time for a little segment that I like to call, Tell Me That Don't Stink. Now see, I have a theory that men and women both appreciate smells, but we do not appreciate the same kinds of smells. See, I think women appreciate pleasant smells, would you yes. agree? Yes. And men have an appreciation for unpleasant smells. And to prove it, today I've got one of my favorite products. It is a bottle of dough in heat urine, and I and this is unrehearsed. I want each of the girls, they have promised that they're gonna take one deep sniff of this. All right, so let's take okay. it, you gotta do it. <laughs> Go, girl. Brooke, your turn, your turn. <laughs> oh, it's in there. I'm, I'm eating it. I'm it's eating like, it. It's like dripping in the back right, of my now throat. It's now. Here's the guy. <laughs> oh, it's so awful. That's pretty nice. That's a good steak. <laughs> That's a good steak. Oh, yeah. It's so foul. Oh, baby. Come on, don't it's still burned off my nose. It's still yeah. dripping in my nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm mad you sick oh back to more blue collar TV. That is a world class oh. stink. Oh. Tell me that. I'm don't suing stink. you. I'm suing you. from the show. There we oh. are. Now that is an unusual accent. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from the West Village in New York. <laughs> New York? That's a New York accent? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, all right, let's get to work. Says here. Oh, why'd you give him this? He can't read. He can't read a lick. Don't <laughs> give it. <laughs> hey, you little devil, looks like here you fell in love with somebody at work. Oh, ah. I did. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. they're coming over uh -huh. for dinner, oh. and so I wanted to make a good first impression. Well, it ain't gonna be here, Elle. This candle stinks. Smell oh. that. I want to hurt. <laughs> Woo! It's even clean on top of stuff. I Whoa. dusted it just before you came. <laughs> Fellas, we got about four hours to turn this little dollhouse into a shagging wagon. Oh. Yeah. We're gonna get it done, Elle. Oh. I have a coworker who is cuter than cute, but it never goes past a hug. So I am hoping that the trashy trio can hook me up. Because, <laughs> no, 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 guys, that's worth $8,000. No, 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 put that down. Is this part of the show? Seriously? That's my tower. This is my breath and my tower. Hey. No. Gone. No. No, no, no. Ellie. Huh? Come in here, man. Okay. Oh, God! No, it was not oh. me. You can thank Jack for that. You are sick. You are sick. Hey, listen, here around the crapper, 
You're going to want to throw some gun and hunting magazines there so, you know, you always got something to read. Uh-oh, okay. somebody come back for an encore. Let's what? get that. <laughs> Ellie, this medicine cabinet is a mess, man. Look at all these creams oh, and lotions. That. You know, you don't want to think you're already living with a woman, dude. You got to get busy. This is where you got to go. Okay. See, you okay. wouldn't want to be, dude. Oh, that was great on my head. Okay. What is that? Oh, uh, that's just for my, well. In the top. Okay. <laughs> So, for dinner, we are starting with a gorgonzola pear and walnut salad and, of course, a $300 tin of beluga caviar. Which we will top off with an 89-cent can of meaty chili. What? No, chili? <laughs> Takes the edge off the fish tank. Matt, nothing will peel her panties faster than a $9 box of wine. Drink it through a straw. Hey, buddy, here's your problem right here. You got too many sleeves in here. Good oh. night. I bet you got almost 29 sleeves. You what? need to whip oh. those sleeves off. No. Give women a good whip of your sleeves. Oh, God, right there. listen, the show is going to pay me back for those, right? Because some of those are Gucci. Seriously. Oh, dear God, that's Crystal. Are you going to thank me come summertime? <laughs> Well, Elliot, our work is done. What do you think? Look, he's speechless. I'm telling you, hey, you are good to go, buddy. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. Seriously, look at me. It's about confidence. You think you're going to get it? You're going to get it. You're going to get it. <laughs> here we go, fellas. Here's the payoff right Here's here. Fingers, Elliot. Hi. Hi. That's got to be the ugliest girl I've ever seen. Oh, Elliot, I love your place. It's so butch. I.E. totally makes me hot. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. But she loves it. She hey, loves it. Way hey, to go, Elliot. Good, sir. Confidence, buddy. European. Look at all them stars. There's a lot of stars. Boy, it sure makes you feel insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Hey, dude, turn that way. You're peeing on my boots. European. Coming up, more outtakes. The carnage of this woman has left behind and scarred me for life. <laughs> well, it is raining. We had to take a break, and I never should have told these guys that there were calls associated, you know, with hunting because they've gone through my bag. They pulled out all the duck calls, the coyote calls, and the deer calls, and we've made a little band, and right now we'd like to play for you our rendition of of when the saints come marching in. I'm Jim Farnsworth. Tonight we begin in the living room of a modest farm home in Fairfield, Kansas on the night of June 22nd, 2004. <laughs> the Parker family is wrapping up their evening. Uh, uh, well, that'll do for me, sweetheart. I'm gonna go get a bath <laughs> and go to bed. Good night, Graham. <laughs> Tom's grandmother went in for a bath. A bath that would change the family's lives forever. Moments later, nature called, and Tom headed to the bathroom. <laughs> 
The trauma of seeing a naked 80-year-old female body blinded Tom instantly. Well, it was the last image I'll ever see. She looked like a... like a bloodhound in a shower cap. Mama, what the hell's going on in there? Tom walked in on me while I was taking a bath. Well, put your dad gum robe on. I can't. All that hollering made my back go out. Don't go in there, Daddy. It's horrible. Are you all right, Tom? What happened? I can't see, Daddy. Call an ambulance. 911. 911. What's the number for 911? Oh, just call information. Ed, doubt information. Information? Yeah, what's the number to 911? One moment, please. The number you requested is 911. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I gotta get a pen. I don't got paper pen. Oh, yes, sir. I'll... Son, you got a pen? I can't see. All right, you ain't gotta get all. <laughs> you know, we use a strawberry. All right, go ahead. Yes, uh, the number you requested is 911. Hold on, go slower. I'm using a strawberry. Nine. All right. One. All right. One. What was the last number again? Uh, the last number was one. One, that's it. I appreciate it. OK, you're welcome, sir. Ed dialed 911. 911, do you have an emergency? Yeah, listen. Uh... My son just saw his grandma naked, now he's gone blind. Okay, now don't panic, sir. I'm dispatching a unit right away. Well, we really appreciate it. I said stay calm! <laughs> EMT team Don Clinton and Jim Mayweather responded immediately. Oh, thank God. Wipe your feet. Hey, he hasn't seen anything since he last saw her, and Grandma's in the bathroom. She throwed her back out. Huh? Careful when you go in there. Even the most seasoned emergency workers couldn't handle the horrifying sight. All I remember is she looked like a bloodhound in a shower cap. I fought in the Gulf War. But the carnage, excuse me, that this woman has left behind has scarred me for life. With his partner out of commission, Don had to think fast. Thanks to years of training and careful planning, he ingeniously rectifies the situation. What can you say except thank you? You're welcome. Who is that? Tom's grandmother went in for her bath. Get the hell out of my house, stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I've cleaned up highway accidents, murders. I fought in the Gulf War. But the carnage, excuse me, the carnage that this woman has left behind has scarred me for life. <laughs> With it. <laughs> Tonight. ABC brings you the most important television event of all time. When we throw away the typical handsome brooding reality star and give you a leading man who is a real man. Are you ready to meet your bachelor? <laughs> hey, ladies. Who's ready to get her done? It's the real bachelor. Good Lord, I'm happy in Rosie O'Donnell at a buffet of ho-hos. Hey, 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 hold still. Uh, uh, hold, hold it. Uh, oh, hey, I got it. Go. <laughs> hold on, let me try. Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Open your mouth. 
Tell me that don't stink. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that Natasha. <laughs> you're pretty hot. I don't know, though. I can't tell if she's into me. I mean, that girl's got me more frustrated than the deaf mute playing bingo, getting bingo, and trying to holler out the word bingo. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, after he left, I was always kind of searching. Searching for hey, the inner... Hey, While you're in the searching mood, why don't you search your little hind end up there and make me a sandwich? <laughs> Man, that girl just don't know how to tell a joke. Good night. She got me more frustrated than the elephant man trying on turtleneck shirts. I ain't never said this to no girl before, but you're a little different, so I think I can tell you. I got a pimple on my back that you could have put a gift shop on. You think you could get that some bit? I asked Larry if he could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? He asked me to fart in the jacuzzi. <laughs> So this cop pulls me over and he says, you been drinking? I said, no, why is there a fat chick in my back seat? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, I don't care who you are. Hey, y'all check this out, check this out. <laughs> Larry. Yes, sir. This is where the rose ceremony would be if there were any women left. <laughs> for a reality show that gets as real as real can get. <laughs> the Real Bachelor, coming soon. Coming up next, it's brand new blue collar comedy. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> well, I wonder what we ought to do, bonehead. Well, we're back, and we still haven't seen any deer yet, but I think I know what our problem is. We've got to cover up our human scent. What's that? It's human scent neutralizer. Come on, you're first. No, 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 no. My, my human scent costs $400 a bottle. Really? OK, good. Oh, oh, God, oh. You're next. Come on, Heath. No, no, Jeff, look, look, look. We don't have to do this, OK? My dad goes hunting all the time. Of course, he never takes me. <laughs> but uh, he taught me a surefire way to attract deer. I simply. Put this on. The other deer see me, they come over to play. Aww. Thank you, Heath. Okay, there's a little tip for you ladies. There's other hunters out in the woods. Who's next? Okay, okay, now you know it's no secret that marriage is all about trade-offs. I mean, if you drag your wife to a ball game, then she gets to drag you to the theater. It's only fair. Unless, of course, it's Shakespeare, and then Shakespeare is not fair. Because my wife took me to the theater. I sat there. I watched this play. I had no idea what they were talking about. All right, with that in mind, tonight I have brought along Larry the Cable Guy, who, believe it or not, is very schooled in Shakespearean English. <laughs> and he's going to help us translate a soliloquy from Hamlet performed by our very own Gary Anthony Williams. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> well, I wonder what we ought to do, bonehead. <laughs> Whether it is nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Somebody's done slung arrows at Mr. Nobler. <laughs> or take arms against the sea of troubles. Let's take some shotguns down to the beach. <laughs> to sleep, and by sleep, end the heartache. I wish I could sleep, but I got real bad heartburn. <laughs> Tis a consummation devoutly wished. In the words of the great ZZ Top, I'm just looking for some tush. Get her down. <laughs> Aye, there's the rub. Lotion in a magazine, there's your rub right there. <laughs> Get her done. I like Shakespeare. 
For in what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? I got no idea. There is the respect that makes calamity of so long life. Pass, go on the next one. Who would fartles bear? Look out, it's a farting bear. <laughs> to grunt and sweat under weariness bear. He's trapped under the farting bear. <laughs> then fly and bear others. A farting bear, he can fly, and he float off to be with other farting bears. <laughs> we have kicked the bear's ass. We live the end. Poppy Steve. You better put out that cigarette. Poppy Seed, you smoking last week and told you not to do it no more. Well, Poppy Seed, you were on the tractor the other day and you told you not to do that. Yeah, well, Poppy Seed, you looking at them magazines and you wasn't supposed to. Hey, what the hell are you boys doing out there? Oh, oh no! Poppy Seed us! Poppy Seed. When we return, the hunters become the hunted. Because I gotta be honest with you, I never thought I would do television again. Well, that's our special, and even though we didn't bag anything, um, that's why they call it hunting and not shooting. But that's not the important part anyway. It's the camaraderie and the memories that we all share about today. Memories of Heath getting shot in the head yeah. <laughs> and Heath losing his gun. Yeah. And I didn't get to kill anything. You know what, though? I, I, I think the special turned out great. And you know what? That's because of you folks at home. And thank you so much for being so supportive of Blue Collar TV and for giving us this chance. Because I got to be honest with you, I never thought I would do television again. Thanks to these people, it's been an absolute blast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, the deer's got your gun! I'm going to get the truck!